So we know that in PyTorch, whenever you want to work with your own data, you need to create a class from your data. But how can you inherit from PyTorch's dataset class? Because you should, you know that. How can you override the functionalities, namely len and get item of dataset class in PyTorch? How can you add new functionalities to your dataset class? All of these questions and much more will be beautifully dissected at this video at ML Down. So, stick around. Hello everyone and welcome to ML Down. So in the previous video, we talked about PyTorch's abstract dataset class and we said that any PyTorch class that you create to deal with your datasets, um, they have to all inherit from this PyTorch's abstract dataset class. And we also mentioned that we need to, um, upon creating our dataset classes, not only do we have to inherit from this dataset class, we also have to create our, our uh, constructor uh, we have to overwrite the get item and, and the len uh, dunder functions in PyTorch's abstract dataset class, right? So we talked a lot about it. Now, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom dataset class for our MRI dataset, okay? So without further ado, uh, let's just get started. So I'm going to create a, I'm going to turn this into, as, you, as you, I'm sure you've seen, um, so I'm going to make this a markdown cell. Uh, let's say creating, um, maybe make it a header. So creating a subheader. MRI custom dataset class. Yes. Let me bring it all the way up. Now, so this is like defining any other class in Python, right? So class, let's call it MRI. And we're going to inherit from PyTorch's dataset class. Yes. Now, let's define the constructor, right? So init, right? We always have the self variable there. Now, this is where you decide what's going to happen when you create an object of your dataset class. For example, let's say the dataset that you've downloaded from Kaggle already comes uh, in a sort of a nice structure, like you've got your training data in one folder, you've got your validation data in one other folder, and your test data in the third folder, right? So all of them are already defined and nicely separated from one another. Now, in this case, all you need to do probably, I mean, there are different ways of doing this, but if I were you, what I would do is I would just create, um, just pass a variable called X. Uh, let's, let's call it images and let's call the other one labels, right? So let's say the data that you're dealing with already has your images and labels for each one of the training validation and test sets separately, right? So in other words, if you have a dataset class that has the ability to, to grab all of the images and all of the annotations, AKA labels for those images from you, and then store them locally in, in it as, as a safe place, as an object, as a dataset object class, as, as a dataset object, um, then th that, that's a good design, isn't it? I mean, you just pass in your images and your labels to it, and that's it. That, object of this dataset class of this MRI class will be, for example, only responsible for, uh, you know, storing your training data and the, and the labels for that training data of your MRI data set, right? So you can then create a second object of this class, but this time you'll pass the images and labels for your validation set right, then that second object is going to be responsible for all of the data and the ground truth labels for the validation set, right? So this is, I mean, just one way of doing this. So, I mean, upon creating an object of this class, like any other uh, objectifying or objectification of Python, uh, what happens is the constructor gets, uh, you know, executed automatically, right? So you just put in a couple of instance variables, so let's say self images equals images that you've sent uh, to the constructor and then self that labels equals labels, right? 
So running this literally grabs images and labels and puts them in two instance variables, self images and self labels. There you go. Now your object has both of the both the images and the labels stored in it, right? Now Upon creating this constructor, I'm going to come back to this because uh, this is not how we're going to do it. Because our data doesn't come in a nice form of, you know, training and tests and validation sets separately, right? So we're going to have to go, uh, you know, go through the labor of doing it ourselves. But this is just one example. I just want you to take, take this particular point out of this. The way you design your constructor has a lot to do uh, with how you have received your data, what sort of structure is in your data, the, in the directories of your data, how have they been separated? Do you want to load the data outside of your, uh, of your data set class, load it, separate it separately into train tests and validation, and then pass them to your, uh, to your data set class? Or do you want to do, uh, you know, loading the data and separating them from, tr uh, I mean, into train validation and test, into your I mean in the constructor of your data set class so do you want to do all of that in the constructor or do you want to do all of it outside and then upon creating an object of your MRI class pass each one of those data and labels to your uh, data set object so it all it's all a design sort of issue how you're going to design it right so this is just one example so Every time you create an object of your class, the constructor gets implemented automatically. I mean, gets executed automatically, right? It is up to you, yes, that how you're going to design this, how you, what you want your uh, dataset class object to do upon being created, right? In the uh, in the dunder init function, right? Now, we also mentioned that you need to override the len and get item functionalities, right? So again all you do is you just literally write the name of the dunder function and then you literally instead of you you remember that previously we had this raise error which means which says not implemented um in the in the abstract class right so this is what we we're inheriting from, from as you remember from previous video right so here i want to sort of basically tell PyTorch how do I want to define the length of my dataset object? What does it mean uh, to compute the length of a dataset object, right? So, and that is really simple. So you return, what do you think we should return, by the way? What, what could be logical for us to consider as the length of a dataset object? I think you've got it, right? So it's going to be the, like, for example, number of images that we have, right? So self.images consists of a bunch of images. So how many do we have there, right? So this could be a nice representation of, the, uh, of what we could mean out of uh, when we say the length of my data set object. So it basically means how many data points do we have there? In this case, every data point is an image, right? So if you have 1,000 images, you can be damn sure that we're going to have 1,000 labels for those images because each image could be either tumor or not tumor healthy, right? Tumor healthy, healthy tumor, right? So I can return the length of my self.images variable or I can return the length of self.labels variable, whatever have you, that's, that's fine, right? So it doesn't make much of a difference. So I'm going to return... Um, length of self dot images one teeny tiny issue here though so it's really not that customary to take the length of a numpy array right usually you, you use length to you know to, to to get the length of a list right because numpy arrays could be of different dimensionalities you could have a numpy array of 1 by 10 by 10 by 12 i mean whatever dimensionality have you right you can have many as many of them as you want right so usually what we do is we grab the shape of that NumPy array and then we grab the first element of that shape. For example, let's say um, A is a NumPy array. Um, let's say um, it is, uh, let me just, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And I'm just gonna reshape this. A equals A dot reshape. 
now we have six elements right so I can just say two by three right so if I just print out a so this is what it is so you've got two arrays each of which has three elements right now if I grab the shape of this array it returns two by three right now if I say the first element of that and by that I mean this is a tuple when you when you ask for the shape of a numpy array it returns that shape in the form of a tuple that you can you can access its elements by by its indices right so when you say the zeroth element it means I just want to grab two right so it's the same story here um, let me just get rid of this right so you just grab the first element in that shape meaning that how many images do we have right as simple as that and that's your length function by the way that's your length dunder function as simple as that now the other one that you need to override is get item right let me just copy this just just so we can be faster um, so as you see as you, as you can see it's sort of indented one step more right I just highlight the bit that I want to de-indent I hold the shift key and then while holding it I'm gonna tap on uh, the tab key once is enough right and this bit I don't even need this bit right now the get item it receives an index and it returns the the data that correspond to that index right now how do you how, how are you gonna do it because you know you've got both images as one data structure and you've got the labels as the second data structure right so how are you gonna actually you know um, ret like return are you gonna just return the, the for example the fifth uh, index of your images not the labels or just fifth index of the labels and then not the images or you're gonna somehow find a magical way of returning the fifth brain MRI image with the fifth label corresponding to that image meaning that okay this is the image at living at index five and here's the label for that image which could be either tumor or non-tumor right which one do you think we should do yes so the second one we want to grab not only uh, we want to be able to select an image plus the ground truth for that image right you, you, you need to have the labels for these images now the way that you can return this again this is um you can just you know it, it's of, it depends on you how you want to uh, code this but it's really customary to use a um, sort of a dictionary structure uh, to do it then um, I would say I'm gonna uh, create a, a variable called sample and then I'm gonna make a dictionary out of it right so the way I'm going to implement it is I'm gonna put a couple of keys one is going to be image the other one is going to be label for that image right and the values it's going to be one of the images in myself that's images right but which one exactly the one living at the position dictated by index right the same story here this time i'm gonna grab one of the labels living at myself dot labels uh, instance variable but which one again the one that lives at index right whatever index is whatever number that is and then I'm returning my sample see so get item actually is the is, is returning a dictionary right so it is uh, then our responsibility to sort of deconstruct this dictionary into the actual image and the actual label but <clears throat> this is nice because we know exactly we are separating the two and we're returning we're returning the image and it's, it's and it's ground truth in one go right so this is sort of neat um and that's it really right so this is this is a simple uh, you know customized uh, data set class and and it does everything for you so long as you send the images and labels to this uh, data set okay right uh, there's only one issue here and it's that the data set that we get that we've gotten from Kaggle doesn't come in a nice you know separated way like I mean we've got you've got some images under tumor some images under healthy they're they're separated there's no 
like a ground truth vector or ground truth file. So you have to construct those ground truths yourselves, right? So because of that, the way I've decided to do this is to actually, uh, in the constructor, I've decided to um, to load the data from the from the directories and you know separate them into brain and tumor, and then and then I mean grab the data from those directories into brain and tumor and uh, sort of categories, and then put all of them together, right? Or even separately, it doesn't matter. Um, it all depends on your design. So it's really similar to what we've done in, in, our, in one of our first videos. So if you remember, we, we have done something like this. So we have seen how we can actually, you know, read data from a directory and, and then load them into some NumPy arrays. So we've already done that. So I'm sort of putting all of that operation in my constructor, right? So there's no need for any parameter anymore because everything's gonna happen here, right? Now I'm just gonna copy and paste that code over here. So it's exactly what you've seen before, right? Nothing new here. And so this way, here at this at this step, I mean by uh, by by the time we get to this step, we already have our tumor and healthy data set, right? In the form of NumPy array. So these are our images, right? So these are our images. Now, what about the ground truths? So we need to also define our ground truth or our labels, right? Now, <clears throat> it all depends on us, how, how we're going to define that. So one way to go about this is to, for example, say that I'm going to represent the tumor class with digit one, and I'm going to represent digit healthy with, uh, sorry, class healthy with digit zero. Is some sort of a, hun a one hot code, a one um, one hot code sort of representation. So it depends on you. How are you going to define this? Tumor one, healthy zero, or healthy one, tumor zero. How are you going to do it? So it all depends on you. So the way um, I'm going to do it, I'm going to consider um, for the tumor. I'm going to I'm going to consider one because it's like it's your positive class. It means that if an image is classified as positive, it means yes, there's a tumor there, right? So this is what I'm going to do. There's a cl there's a functionality in um, in NumPy that sort of generates a bunch of zeros or a bunch of ones for you, and it's already there, right? So it's called MP ones, right? Now when you put MP uh, ones, what it does is it actually um, it, it, it's asking for you to, it, from you to actually say how many ones do you want, right? So because I want to I wanna show tumorous images with, with label one, so I'm going to need as many number of ones as I have images, as I have tumor images, right? So because of that, uh, I'm going to pass the, the, a, a value that represents how many tumor images I have, right? Say what, I have 1,000, then it means I'm, I'm going to need 1,000 ones, right? So as you, as you know, using shape and the first element of that, I can get the number of tumor images, right? And it's also customary to define uh, the data type of, I mean, when you, when you use MP1s and MP0s, it's also customary to also define the data type uh, for, the, for those ones and zeros. So it's, I always go with float, float32 is fine. Um, the same story goes with uh, the healthy label, right? So it's literally the same story, but this is going to be healthy, and instead of zero ones, I'm going to have zeros, right? And this this time, I'll grab the length of like how many healthy images I have. But if I have one thousand healthy images, I'm going to need one thousand zeros, right? Perfect. Right. So in order to now proceed. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally concatenate all of my data together, right? So I'm, I'm going to concatenate my tumor and healthy images together as one giant, uh, as one giant sort of um, um, array 
of all of the images and then I'm gonna concatenate all of my uh, tumor and healthy labels together as one giant array for labels. So the way to do that is actually through NumPy's very nice functionality called uh, concatenate, right? So it's literally an np.concatenate. Now I'm gonna, let's say, call this concatenate, right? I don't know why I keep mi missing the sharp symbol. Right. Um, right. So let's now define myself that actually have them already. Right. So, so self that images can be NumPy concatenate, and then I'm concatenating tumor and healthy together. Right. As you notice, I've put them in in two on uh, I'm in between two parentheses because concatenate actually wants you to pass the arrays to be concatenated in the form of a tuple, right? And then you notice that I put axis zero. Now that's important. So zero means concatenate them across the first axis, right? For example, if you have, um, like, let, let me put it this way. So if you have uh, one array is, um, you have five, say 100 images of, uh, 512 by 512 and each of them has three channels right and let's say you have another numpy array but this one is the same story except you have 200 of that of that right so when you concatenate these two arrays together each each of them has um, sort of a different shape but when you concatenate across the first axis it means that I'm gonna put 100 of these images attach that all of them to 200 of these images so you will end up with 300 images of 512 by 512 with three channels right so it's literally concatenate them together across the first axis as simple as that and the same story goes with um, you know when you concatenate the your, your labels so it's again the same story Again, the form of a tuple, you put tumor label and healthy. Actually, for this, you don't need an axis because uh, these, um, you know, these ones and zeros already have only one dimension. So they're just a bunch of ones or a bunch of zeros, right? They don't have multiple channels. So you, you can put axis zero, you can just not put it. That's, that's fine, right? <clears throat> now, all of it seems okay, right? So when I create an object of this class, right? What it does is it, it inherits from dataset class and it loads all of your data into one instance variable called septet images. So all of your images live there and all of the labels corresponding to those images live under septet labels, right? So you've got everything when you create an object of this class. You'll have all of the data with, with the corresponding labels, right? And uh, when you, when you, when you uh, take the length of that object, grabs uh, the first dimension of all of your images, which is self in, in self.images. And with, when you subscript that object, it returns uh, the image of your interest living under index and the label of, uh, corresponding to that image, again, living, on, uh, living in uh, self.labels under placeholder or index index, right? And, ret and you return that uh, as a, in the form of, uh, of a dictionary. Now, one last thing that I wanna show you is, what if you want to add more functionalities to it? For example, let's say you want to do some, uh, you know, image processing or some pre-processing to, to your images. Now, these images are grayscale, right? So it means that the, the, the values of these pixels uh, range from zero all the way to 155, right? Now it is customary in, when you train a neural network, it's customary to normalize those, um, you know, the values of your data, right? So you typically normalize between zero and one or between minus one and one, right? Now, um, let's say I wanna normalize between zero and one. That's very normal. So I'm just gonna define a function called normalize, right? Now, <clears throat> I don't want it to return anything. I just wanted to apply normalization on uh, on my on all of my images uh, under self dot images right so all I have to do is what I do is self dot images 
will be equal to self.images divided by 255, right? <coughs> That's it. So when I run normalize, this will happen. Now, I'm just going to show you very briefly how this whole thing works. Now, if I run this, okay, that works fine. That's great. Now, let's call MRI equals MRI, which is my MRI class, right? Good. So it ran. It was fine. Now, before I continue, what is the length of my MRI object? So it's going to be all of the images that I have in my data set, right? Which is 245, isn't it? That's exactly what the number was. We've, we've seen this in previous videos. And let's say I want to um, grab the, I don't know, the fifth element of uh, the fifth index of um, the image corresponding to the fifth um, index. Now, this has to return a dictionary, right? And it does. It returns a dictionary. For image, you've got a NumPy array of all of the images, right? And for the label, you'll have the value, which in this case is one. And you remember that one means tumor, zero means no tumor, right? So that's just a simple, a small proof that we actually have what we think we have, right? Now, uh, I want to show you something very interesting. Now, if I grab MRI, let's say fifth, right? So as you, you saw that it returns dictionary, right? And let's say I grab, um, so I grab the image corresponding uh, to the keyword image, right? Let's say I grab the actual image. Let's call this, um, let's call this image, right? So I grab the actual image, right? So if I um, so uh, show you image, it's actually a NumPy array. And if I show you the shape of that image, it is three by 128 by 128, right? So we have three channels, 128 width and 128 height, right? Now, what I want to show you is to show you the values that are stored in this, in this particular image. Like what is the maximum value and what is the minimum value, right? The reason I want to show you this is because I want to show you what will happen when I run this function in, inside my, my MRI object, right? So before running it and after running it. Now, if I numpy.max, so the maximum value in my image, in my, in my image is 255. Now, what is the minimum value in my, in my image? 12. Okay. Now the way to normalize this is to literally call the normalize functionality, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to run this again. I'm going to run this again, but this time I'm going to call the normalize function within that object, right? So before retrieving anything from it, I'm going to normalize all of the images, right? So when you do that, boom, finish, right? You notice that normalize is not supposed to return anything. It just does something internally, right? Now I'm going to, I'm going to grab the same image. It's the same dimensionality, but what's the maximum value, pixel value in that image? Now it's one, right? And what is the minimum value? It's something much smaller than 12, right? Because the whole, all the values have been shifted sort of between zero and one, right? That's great. So I think, uh, I think that's it for this video. But all I want you to know that is that in particular, the way I have designed the constructor of this, of this data set is not really that customary. It really depends on the structure of your data, right? And I'm going to change this in, in, in the upcoming videos. But in this video, we just wanted to look at how we can, uh, you know, create a custom data set class and how we can actually create an object of it, maybe define functionalities to it and call upon those functionalities, right? Perfect. So, um, I hope that this has been informative for you. So if you liked the video and, uh, and enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe and post your questions under the comments. I, I'm always delighted to, uh, to, to have a nice discussion, right? You can also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook, right? That's great. I hope that this has been informative for you. Mind yourselves.